Yo, good day viewers, welcome to my channel, this is Radical Science. If today is your first time I'm visiting my channel, all I want you to do is to hit the subscription button and also turn the subscription bell on so that any time we post in this channel, you can be able to get notifications to enable you watch our videos anytime we post. So on today's edition, I'll be taking you on this year's 2025 JUPEP Chemistry Practical on Salt Analysis. So all I want you to do is just to pay attention to this video, get your pen and paper ready because everything I'm going to do in this sort of analysis, you will definitely see it in your exam. So I would like you to pay keen attention to this video. If you have anybody who is writing this JPEP exam, all I want you to do is to share this video to them so that they can partake in this um, tutorial. And also, if you need any assistance as far as this exam is concerned, all you need to do is to chat me up using the phone number on the screen. I will add it to our Telegram or whatsapp group where you get all the necessary assistance that you need remember there are things we cannot say online here but right in the group will give you everything that you need to know all you need to do is just to follow the instruction and i promise you that you will have excellent results by the time your result comes out so let us proceed so we are going to be adding sodium hydroxide to x so by the time we add sodium hydroxide to X, which is a compound known as S, which has already been given. So when we add it, we are going to be taking the observation. Remember, the test is add sodium hydroxide to X. Then the observation and the inference is what you should be testing for or what you should be expecting. Okay. So we are going to be testing between sodium hydroxide and the um, copper sulfide solution. So this is our sodium hydroxide. Is our sodium hydroxide and these are our copper sulfate. So we are going to add some drops of this into this and then um, take our observation. Now you can see. Now, if you look at it very well, you will discover that it has a blue jelly precipitate. Blue jelly precipitate. Look at it very well. Blue jelly precipitates. It's on the test tube. So it has blue precipitates. You can see it's blue precipitates. So that is for the observation. Now the inference is presence of copper 2 ion. That is the, the inference. Presence of copper 2 ion. Or you can say copper 2 ion is present. Copper 2 ion is present. You can see it. You can see. Let me quickly um, turn it inside here so that you'll be able to see you see it has already it has already blocked you can see it has already blocked so we have this now we add a sodium hydroxide to x which now our observation we say that um blue precipitate blue precipitate is formed is formed okay so blue precipitate is formed now under the inference under the inference you see presence presence of copper 2 ion presence of copper 2 ion that is the inference okay so under number two here we say add ss nh for OH to X. Okay, so let us carry out the practical and see. Now on the second wheel, we are going to be adding um, ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium hydroxide to um, copper sulfide. So we are going to be adding ammonium hydroxide to this and also check the observation. Here is ammonium hydroxide. Okay, you can see when we added this is ammonium hydroxide. Oh, we'll added ammonium hydroxide to this. This is the reaction it gave to us. So now, what is the observation? We can see that it has a deep blue solution. So deep blue solution is formed here. The inference now is tetraamine copper two ion. Tetraamine copper two ion. That is what is formed here tetra amine copper 2 ion complex is formed here so that is that okay so when this is 
added to x, when this is added to x, we were able to observe a deep, deep blue, a deep blue solution. A deep blue solution is formed. A deep blue solution is formed. Okay, so under the um, inference, we have formation, formation of tetra so we have tetra amine copper 2 ion tetra amine copper 2 ion formation of tetra amine copper 2 ion okay so that is that now let's go over to the third one let's go over to the third one let's go back to the third one okay so on the number three which is the third um, test is sodium hydroxide plus x plus z okay sodium hydroxide plus z so let us now do the test and check out for the observation and the inference so still on that we are going to be adding sodium hydroxide to ion sulfide sodium hydroxide to ion sulfide now this is our ion sulfide this is our ion sulfide okay this is our ion sulfide this is our ion sulfide. So we are going to be adding this sodium hydroxide to it. And this is our sodium hydroxide, remember? Okay. Now, if you look at it very well, it is greenish in color and it looks dirty. Okay. It looks dirty. It looks dirty. So the, the observation there is dirty green. Um precipitates is formed dirty green precipitates is formed okay now this dirty green precipitates they under the inference here we have ion 2 is formed ion 2 ion is formed okay so when we added sodium hydroxide plus z which is a ferrous sulfide now what is formed is dirty a dirty green a dirty green solution precipitates precipitates forms dirty dirty green precipitate forms so now under the inference we have a presence presence of ferrous sorry presence of F2 ion or ferrous ion or ion 2 ion okay presence of ion 2 ion okay so you can as well call it presence of ion 2 ion or ferrous ion okay so that is that on that now let's go over to the fourth so on the next, we are going to be adding ammonium hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide to this um, ion sulfide. Um, ion sulfide. So let's add and see. Now you can see that a green precipitate is formed. A green precipitate also is formed. Okay, so let's try and then um, shake it very well. It turns brown. You can see it now. It turns brown when you properly shake it. Okay, it turns brown when properly shaked. Okay, so that is that. Okay, so we have green pre green precipitates that turn. That turns brown. Green precipitates that turns brown. So under the inference, under the inference, here we have an oxidation, oxidation of ferrous ion to ferric to ferric. Remember, this is three. Lutheric ion. 
oxidation of ferrous ion to ferric ion, or you can call this um, ion, ion two ion, two ion three ion. Okay. So now let's go over to number four. Number okay, sorry, number five. The number five or fifth one. So you permit me to clean up from here so that we can be able to you know manage the board very very well. Okay, so add beryllium chloride to Z. Okay. Okay, so after adding beryllium chloride to Z, now under the observation we have white white precipitate precipitates forms white precipitate forms okay so under the inference we have presence presence of ion sulfide ion ion sulfide ion presence of ion sulfide ion okay presence of ion sulfide ion so now let's go over to the cyst Okay, so this is our zinc powder and we are going to be adding um, dilute hydrochloric acid to our zinc powder. Okay, so let's see what we have here, our zinc powder. So this is our hydrochloric, dilute hydrochloric acid. So we're going to be adding it direct. So you can see, you can see it is bringing something like smoke and um, it is boiling. You can see it. You can see it. You can see it now. You can hear the sound and a kind of, you know, smoke, effervescence. Effervescence is observed. You see smoke going up. And so, when we added dilute hydrochloric acid to Y, so we're able to we're able to get an FR. So we say FR makes sense. Effervescence is observed, or you can just say effervescence observed. Effervescence observed, or you can say effervescence is observed. Okay, so now on and now we have um, evolution, evolution of evolution of hydrogen gas, hydrogen gas confirms. Confirms metal, metal reactive. Confirms metal reactive. Okay, proceed. If you have any question, all I want you to do is to leave a comment in the comment section. And I promise you that as soon as I see your question, I will give you a response. Thank you very much and God bless you.